in Dubai is Abdul Khalik Abdullah, a professor of political science at United Arab Emirates University. It's good to have you. Um, you and I talk regularly. I want to start by playing just a little of President Biden speaking from Tel Aviv yesterday, sir. Have a listen. Justice must be done. But I caution this while you feel that rage. Don't be consumed by it. After 9-11, we were enraged in the United States. While we sought justice and got justice, we also made mistakes. As close to a call for restraint without actually using the word, I have to say, um, no calls for de-escalation or a calming down of the situation. And we know there was, you know, no ceasefire agreed um, while the uh, American president was here. It was very difficult to work out what his objectives were on this trip. What they achieved, of course, was the opening of the Rafa border crossing for some 20 aid trucks to get through, which, of course, is important given what's uh, the, the catastrophic, near catastrophic situation there. But I just wonder, would you assess, how would you assess the impact of the U.S. president's trip to Israel, given the real concern now about what the next phase of this war on Hamas will look like? Thanks for having me, uh, Becky. I think uh, the president didn't look uh, one bit as a peacemaker. Uh, the speech that he gave uh, is a testimony today. Uh, he came across very much as a war uh, maker, as a warmonger. He fully, totally, completely sided with Israel. And I think uh, he is dragging America into this. He is making this not a Netanyahu war, but a Biden war. He is making this not an Israeli war, but an American war. And for that reason, uh, you know, they canceled the summit. And for that reason, America is just uh, giving the green light, full support, moral, political, whatever support that there is, America can bring to Israel to continue with this genocide in Gaza. Is this a is this a personal position, or you genuinely feel that that is, that is how that trip went down across the region? If you look at the region, if you just saw uh, that video clip of yours, uh, mm. people are mighty angry. Four million Arabs are today more angry that, than, than ever. You see that at, uh, during this demonstration that we just saw in Amman, in Cairo, in Rabat, in Beirut, all over the place. I think there is an anger, and most of that, that anger, of course, directed against Israel. But most of it also, many of it, is also directed today against America. Anti-American is at all time high, Dicky, over here. And I think America is dragging us with this total, complete support for Israeli war. I think it is dragging the whole Middle East into a new cycle of escalation, conflict, and turmoil. This is bad news for America. Well, I don't think we... this is my personal opinion, but it's everybody else's opinion. Yeah. That's certainly the calls of condemnation uh, we hear around the region, the calls for de-escalation, for a stop to this military action. As calls grow in the first instance for a ceasefire, this is what Jordan's foreign minister told me yesterday. The growing perception on the street as they see this unequivocal ironclad support for Israel, for Israel in this war, it is a growing perception that this is a Western Arab Muslim war. That's a place we don't want to get to. That's a place with that we should all work to prevent uh, getting into. And that's why the guns must go silent. Common sense must come back. Reason, rash, uh, rationalism must come back. And we figure out a way out of this darkness. The risk of, of this war expanding right. into the West Bank, into other parts of the region uh, are real. We've got mm -hmm. to stop that before it's too late for all of us. Echoing your words there, Abdul Khalik. Talk to me about the UAE's position specifically. The UAE is or was at least you know, Israel's most important regional ally. What role, if any, does the UAE and Saudi Arabia, for example, reportedly close to normalizing ties before this conflict started? What role uh, do, do these two countries play in, in, in de-escalating things at this point? 
I think the UAE, like Saudi Arabia, like all the others, are very much coordinating with Cairo. Very important capital there. They very much control, uh, 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 coordinating uh, their efforts and their policies with Jordan. Jordan is right over there. So there is a common Arab uh, position. I have never seen Arab governments as united today as they are, as being on the same pages as they are when it comes to this genocide against uh, Gaza. So UAE is part of uh, an Arab world. Yesterday, we had uh, a GCC meeting where the UAE was there, and the GCC came with the strongest condemnation you could have ever heard of Israel, although the UAE and Bahrain have normali normalized relationship with Israel. This is just beyond us. Here is a monster called Israel unleashing its uncontrolled uh, uh, firework and forces, and I think this monster needs to be controlled, and nobody can control it more than America, and America is not doing its job. Do you see the end of the normalization of ties um, with Arab nations at this point? No, I think, you know, Egypt has been normalizing, has normalized relationship with uh, Israel, and it has gone through several of these episodes. Uh, so did Jordan, so now United Arab Emirates. I think this is going to put a, a break, a halt, but it's not going to reverse the process. The process is there and the strategic decision, and it has own, its own logic. So I don't see a reverse of normalizing relationship UAE-Israel. Uh, uh, but I see that the political leg is shaken, and I think it is uh, uh, wuggly, and Israel has to do something to strengthen it. But uh, uh, if, if that continues, I probably do not rule out that Israel uh, 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 ambassador here uh, is being kicked out. Uh, and same thing might happen in Egypt, Jordan, and all of these Arab states. People are very angry, government and people throughout the Middle East. This is taking us back to... Uh, square zero, Becky. We thought this region is uh, into de, de escalation, detente, uh, conversation. We're going back to conflict, we're going back to tension, and if thing, this thing could get out of hand if Iran decides to join in, if Hezbollah decides to join in, it is going to be really bad in the days to come. Abdul Khalik, Abdullah, uh, thank you very much indeed. Your insight and analysis. Uh extremely important at this point.